Hi, this is Clark on Temptress. A bit ago I did a video about how to rewire your windlass and in that video I said my switches are fine. I don't need to replace them. <laughs> Never say things like that. Um, my switches no longer work. So, in this video, I'm going to talk you through how I changed out these switches. After changing out the switches, all the electrical on this windlass project has been updated, fresh and new, and it should work for many, many years. First thing I had to do, of course, is remove the switches from the deck. Uh, they're just screwed down to the deck with some sealant. It's been a while, so they're in very bad shape, and the sealant is, of course, kind of shot because well you know how seal it goes it hadn't caused any leaking into the uh, anchor locker because the way that these get mounted on teak decks uh, the teak just kind of goes a little thinner all the time with the effects of the sun and wear so they're on little pedestals as ah. it were and water doesn't like to go uphill so the next step is to remove the switch from the switch enclosure from the part you can see on the outside the actual switch the part that fails it's just what you see on the table there had quite a hell of a time getting that bolt off but i got it off and of course that rubber had been sealed together for quite some time so i had to help it quite a bit Got it off, and, uh, and now you can see what's involved in disassembling this whole switch. The base plate, a little rubber boot, and of course a ring to hold it all together. Then uh, there's a hole in that base plate, and that's where you mount the screw. Now the switches I used last time have some little cap on them, and that had to be disassembled to get it out through the hole. Get that out, just put the new ones in, tighten them down, and they're ready to be reassembled into the boat. I found that the plate on the deck, the bit with the rubber and all that, lasts a surprisingly long time. I've replaced the rubber once, and uh, these were probably installed originally 50 years ago when the boat was brand new. But the switches themselves, well, they're electrical switches and they don't last forever. Having extra switches is one of the things you really want to have on your boat as spares. You can't really operate your boat very well if you can't raise and lower the anchor. And if your anchor and chain is as heavy as mine is, it's really not something you want to try to muscle up with, well, your arms. Having reassembled the switches, next thing to do in my case, because there was that little raised bit of teak, uh, is just to hit it with a sander a bit, take the teak down to the plane level of the rest of the deck, but most importantly, get all that old sealant off so you can get a nice seal with the new install. Now, whenever I work with sealant, I always use tape. Um, I don't plan on making a mess, and in this case, it turned out I didn't at all. But tape is cheap, tape doesn't take too long, and then you don't have to try not to make a mess. Last thing you want is uh, sealant everywhere uh, and try to clean it up. The very last thing you want is sealant in wood grain, because you really kind of can't get it out. If you have uh, a fiberglass deck, you know, something smooth, metal, whatever, and you're working with, let's say, 5200 or one of those kind of sealants, um, I discovered something years ago. Rubbing alcohol is a solvent for those sealants. And if you uh, just get a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol, you'll be amazed at how well you can clean up that mess. That also includes when you get the stuff all over your hands. 
How did I find that out? Well, one day when I was like back in my 20s, back in Seattle, I was installing the main traveler on Temptress uh, so I could put the main sheet and adjust it more easily. And I'm about to hook it all down. I had the goo all over the traveler and I was about to put it in and it kind of flipped over on my lap and I got 5200 all over my legs. Well, I finished the install, of course, got it all installed, and I've got this goo in the hair of my legs. And it's like, how am I going to get this off? So I went down below with, honestly, the idea of shaving my legs just to kind of get most of it off, or at least not have hair in it. And I opened up the medicine cabinet drawer area, and I saw a bottle of rubbing alcohol. And I said, oh, what the hell? And it worked a charm. So anyway, um, if you learn nothing else in this video, learn that rubbing alcohol is a great solvent for most of the caulks I've dealt with. Okay. This caulk that I'm using is, I don't even know what it is chemically. I usually know these things, but I bought some once and used it in the camper and I was completely impressed with it. It's very, very, very sticky. Seems to hold up well in the sun. Uh, you can tell it. I wish I could tell you more about it right now. I'd have to go to the hardware store and look up what it's in it. But it always seems to be sold in a clear container. They have it both in the long tubes that go in the caulking gun and that little uh, toothpaste tube that you saw me put there. Anyway, got some of that down. Just need enough to make a, a, a seal. Basically, you're making a gasket there. And uh, reassembled and put screws on it. Screw it back together. I get requests all the time to do project videos. I usually don't because it makes the project such a big project, having to like write the video and um, produce it essentially while I'm doing the project. And you don't even know what the project's gonna be while you're doing it. So I don't do a lot of them just because I guess I'm lazy. I tried to take a shot at it this time. And all I did was I ran the camera, as you can see, and just recorded the process. And I'm going to play that for you, and I will uh, well, tell you what I do along the way. If you like this kind of video, and if you learn enough from it, say in the comments that, hey, I don't mind one of these now and again. That's pretty cool. If you think it just shows that I'm being lazy and you'd rather not see this, well, why don't you comment on that too, so I'll know. Um, of course, times might come where it's this or nothing, uh, because... Well, I do a lot of boat projects and you don't see many of them. So it comes down to this. This is about the level of effort I'm willing to do for a YouTube video for projects that I don't think are particularly telling that are very important to have people understand. This is kind of a companion video to the video that came out just a bit ago where I did the wiring for the windlass system. And I did that, of course, with uh, drawings showing the wiring. And, and mostly I did it in a theoretical way. But then, of course, I installed the parts and got them all working. This video is showing me actually do the work. But if you wanted to know, like, the wiring diagram of how these get wired in in a drawing way, you're much better off looking at that other video. This is more just kind of hanging out on Temptress with me and chatting with me while I'm doing the project. Now that was the physical install. The physical install was relatively easy, as you can see. Take out the old, put in the new, get them waterproof. Now the electrical install. Now the electrical install is even easier technically, but I had to crawl up in the anchor locker. And to do that, I had to take all of my nylon road out and pull it up onto deck. Um, I usually have that in that netting that you see all around my hair. Um, so 
doing this project was just a real pain, but that's how boats are. You can't get into the spaces where you need to work on things without taking other things out and just getting yourself into those spaces. So you can't tell in this video, but I'm highly uncomfortable. And of course the light just will not stay where I put it. And I'm having a heck of a time uh, getting this all together. And honestly, I had to have special light to get the camera to work. So there was that. Um, anyway, this is me doing the wiring. What the wiring entails for the switches is we just bring some positive to one pole of each switch so that when the switch is pushed from the deck, oh God, you're Come on. making a connection and the second pole has a positive uh, connection. And then that positive connection of each of the switches goes to its appropriate solenoid and actuates the actual windlass motor. So when you step on the switch, you get the action you want. Um, as I said in the other video, never, never, never step on both of these switches at the same time. You will be closing both solenoids, which will try to run the motor in both directions. And uh, well, the net effect is you'll pop your circuit breaker. Uh, but don't do that. Just don't do that. This process took a little while, but all in all, this isn't a very long video. So you can jump ahead if you don't want to watch me finish the wiring. Uh, won't hurt my feelings, uh, but uh, there we go. Right. gives you an idea of what's involved. All right, now I need this. Most of the wires were salvageable, but some of the wires weren't, so I had to make up some new jumpers, uh, putting uh, crimp connector ends on them. If you're wondering what those big black, red and black wires are, they go to the solar panels that I have up at the bow. And I've always had the boat wired for solar panels in the bow because way back when I had a pair of solar panels on the push pit on the stern railing uh, that it would be there most of the time and while sailing. Oh. But when we got somewhere because of that big dragon wing awning, they would be completely shaded. Right, so and I rigged a way to mount them up at the bow. At the bow, I never used them there while I sailed, but I um, I did find that they worked very well at anchor. And I've always had it set up so you have a couple wires that just come down through that hawse pipe and they plug into the boat. And what I've, tr I've tried everything to figure out how to plug solar panels into the boat in a way that I can plug them and unplug them and such, and nothing held up. I tried expensive and Anderson connectors, uh, they just corroded right away. I've tried everything. And then once after a cruise, I was back at my house and I went out and I wanted to plug in a weed whacker. And where I tried to plug it in, uh, the plug was had a cover on it, but it had been painted uh, shut. You know how that goes. Probably no one has uh, used it since the house was built in the 50s. And I you know, broke the little cover free and I shoved the thing in and it worked a charm. And I got thinking about it, wow. Well, that's a good plug. So I'm temptress for things like solar panels. I know this is non-standard and it probably makes some of you flinch, but I use Anderson connectors um, and they're polarized. One of the plugs, if you get good ones, one of the prongs is bigger than the other. Or if you get the three prong type, of course, there's only one way to plug it in. So that lets you plug a DC plug in. And I do them backwards so that the outlet is on the boat side and the plug is on the solar panel side. Um, short of plugging a solar panel directly into a regular hot AC outlet, which would be interesting, um, there's little chance for failure because not only oh. if you plug something into the boat side would it not deliver enough power to do anything because it's 12 volts, Downwind of that is a, a solar panel regulator, which kind of lets no power through anyway. So uh, it's a pretty safe setup, I think. The big point is it works really crazy well. The only thing that fails is the plugs on the solar panel. And uh, for this particular installation with these good wires and everything, I put uh, regular like extension cord ends on the wires. But very often I just get a cheap zip wire type extension cord like you would use to 
extend the wire for your television in your house. And I cut off the female end and hook that to the solar panel. And then I have the male end that plugs right in as necessary. Um, mm. Like I said, it's going to seem strange, but I tell you, I've tried so many things and this works a charm. And best of all, the only things that fail cost like two and three dollars at any hardware store in the part of the world with 110 power. And having a few in your equipment drawer is not a big burden uh, so that you have backups if things go wrong. When I had the solar panels going forward and back, I have an arch back there now, so I don't do that anymore. I actually had uh, a regular Edison outlet in a waterproof box outside on the stern of the boat. There was little spring-loaded things that would flip closed. And that lasted years and years and years. I, like one of them lasted all through my three years going down the Pacific, uh, hanging out in Mexico, going through the Panama Canal eventually and back up to Florida. Uh, I, I just think that that Edison thing is a great idea. I know I spent more time on that. It has nothing to do with this video, but I wanted to talk while I'm doing all of this crazy wiring. About done now, all I have to do is hook up this last wire that I made uh, to the solenoid and make sure that the other three solenoids coil connectors are nice and tight. And then, well, that should do it. should do it. So now that it's all hooked up, I can step on the switches and I have a working windlass. <sighs> 